Hello, this is Professor Gavor. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about uh, the balanced scorecard measures that drive performance. This was an article in 1992. It was a seminal article in the Harvard Business Review by Kaplan and Norton. Um, in Canvas, you'll find a copy of the article, but this is just a presentation based on it, made by a student <clears throat> named Vabhav Patel, who put these slides together. And I thank him very much for that. All right, so, you know, we've already talked about what you measure is what you get. So organizations' measurement systems strongly affects the behavior of managers and employees. We've talked about examples in class where a company that's only focused on absorption or only focused on inventory will optimize those at the expense of other things. And really, you want to have a balanced view of things, hence this idea of balanced scorecard. Uh, you want to focus on financial, even on making the financial measures more relevant. Because we all know that the primary measures of any business are financial, and most companies want to turn a profit, that being the ultimate measure that they have. Some others say, forget financial measures, improve operational measures like cycle time, defect rates, and the financial measurements will follow. Well, that's true, but you still want to measure that. It's like when we look at grades. Do you want to focus on grades or do you want to focus on learning? If you focus on learning, um, it's hard to measure learning, grades being kind of a measure of degree of learning to a certain extent. But if you focus on grades, you will learn along the way. If you focus on learning, the grades should probably follow. So managers are stuck between the, the two options and they probably shouldn't have to choose. And especially as computer systems have gotten more expansive, they used to have a wide variety of measures at one's disposal has increased dramatically. So back in 1992, they did a year-long project with 12 different companies at the leading edge of performance me measurement. And they devised this idea of a balanced scorecard, kind of like a dashboard on a car or a you know, a dashboard on an airplane, which has much more complicated than a car, even though cars are getting quite complicated. But if you drive a car, what do you have? You're looking at MPG and you're looking at your spinometer for the most part. We also have a tachometer. You also have an internal temperature. You also have the engine temperature and the oil level and all these other things. Many of those other measures, as quite important as they are, you only they're only uh, zero one kind of measures. In other words, you never see them unless something goes wrong, then your temperature light might go on, your engine light might go on. So you have all these that, how often do we look at them? But you need them all so that you can run your car properly. So that's what these guys did. Uh, the balance scorecard includes financial measures. Sure, has to. Uh, that tell the results of actions already taken. That's the other point, is if you've already taken an action and you're measuring it, you can't adjust as you go. If you can measure things that will impact future results, that's also better if you can do it. So includes, but they also include operational measures on customer satisfaction, internal processes, and innovation and improvement activities inside and operational measures that are a driver of future financial performance. And when they did it in 1992, ERP systems were just really coming online. So now what this is kind of common, uh, but it's still worth looking at to make sure you have the right measures. So this balanced scorecard approach allows managers to look at the business from four important perspectives. How do customers see us? That's a customer's perspective. What do we excel at? Internal business perspective. Can we continue to improve and create value, innovation and learning? You know, are we a, a fast follower? Are we the market leaders? Uh, how do we look to shareholders? Well, that's of course the financial perspective that uh, is probably 50%. Like we used to say purchasing, you know, costs isn't everything, but it's certainly the main and driving measure. Well, financial measures are still the main driving measures, but you can augment them with other things. So uh, I guess we like this slide so much, we used it twice. So first, the scorecard brings together in a single management report or in a dashboard. You know, you should come in in the morning and see the measures that are relevant to you uh, as a manager of an operation. 
They might be what happened in your uh, sphere of influence yesterday, the, the management domain that you control. Um, what are the issues perhaps facing you today? What are the corporate measures that maybe uh, are only updated uh, monthly or weekly or monthly or quarterly? And, um, you know, so these are, can help you drive the following kinds of things. Becoming more customer oriented, uh, shortening the response time, which makes your organization more agile, improving quality, emphasizing teamwork, reducing uh, new product development time, and uh, bringing a perspective of managing for the longer term, not just the short term, which we're all pressured to do. Second, the scorecard keeps you from suboptimizing, only focusing on one measure. And again, I go to the examples of absorption and inventory being your only measures that you look at in operations. It forces management to consider other important operational measures together and find out that, you know, it's like whack-a-mole. If I drive one down or emphasize one, it's at the expense of other things. So even the best objective can be achieved in a suboptimal or wrong way. So the balanced scorecard links performance measures to these measurements, financial perspectives, internal business perspectives, kind of like if, if uh, this is uh, financial accounting, this is managerial accounting, ratio management, and all those things. Innovation and learning perspectives, you know, these are longer term. You're not looking at these every day, but maybe these you're looking at every day. Maybe these you're looking at monthly. And then the customer perspective, maybe you're looking at it uh, daily, weekly, or monthly also. So how do we look to shareholders? What must we excel at internally to drive both this and this? Um, are we a market leader? Do we want to be? How are we doing in that? What are we learning as an organization? And then how do customers see us, which also impacts uh, what you're doing internally and what you're doing financially. So companies consider um, mostly having a, in most corporate missions and value statements, they talk about the customer. To be number one in delivering <coughs> values to our customers is a typical mission statement kind of wording. And many companies will have this, and maybe if it's not said exactly that way, it's said something, something some other way. You know, we're, we're customer is job one, uh, whatever the terminology might be. So how a company is performing from its customer's perspective has become, therefore, a priority of top management. So what are the customer's concerns? Quality, performance, service, cost, and time. We spend a lot of time on this in this class. We're talking about on-time and complete deliveries in our perspective from a consumer packaged goods company. Um, companies should articulate goals for time, quality, and performance, and service, and then translate those goals into specific measures. Uh, so measures of time, quality, performance, and service must remain sensitive to the cost of their products. They must be sensitive also. They must be like smart objectives. They must be, um, are they measurable? You know, coming up with a measure that is uh, very costly to get or impossible to measure is not a good measure at all. Is it, can you look at it at a timely basis? Or, you know, again, the expense of getting that measure. Um, are the objectives around the measure? Because a measure without an objective uh, does not lead to improvement. Uh, are the objectives achievable? Those are all things you have to consider. Customers see price only sometimes as, as one component of the cost they incur when dealing with it. But other supplier-driven costs can uh, exist. Ordering, scheduling, delivering, paying for materials, receiving, how easy are you to deal with, um, scrapping, reworking obsolete materials caused by, uh, by the materials and the scheduling disruptions, how often are you late, how often are you calling up with exceptions, how often do you have to expedite your shipments, uh, all of these. So really focusing on most consumer product comp goods companies focus on on-time and complete deliveries with no... Um, with no transportation issues, with no quality issues, and with no billing issues. And that would make it then a perfect order. 
So internal perspectives, what must we excel at? Well, customers, customer-based measures must be translated into measures, you know, how do we deliver an on-time and complete delivery uh, order? Well, internally, if every time you have a scheduled, well, first of all, improve your forecasting. Can you improve your forecasting? Because that will improve your purchasing. And your purchasing is measured by on-time and complete deliveries from your suppliers. Then you have a manufacturing schedule. Did we achieve that schedule? If you don't do that on time and complete, how are you going to get the right products to the right customers at the right time? And the right quantities at the right time. So it's all of this right stuff, how it translates from the ultimate goal, getting the right products to the right customer at the right time and the right quantities with a perfect quality and no billing errors which means you have to do everything internally to that same standard of right product, right quantity, right time, right quality. So excellent it's customer service it, it derives from processes, decisions that occur all throughout the organization. If one part of that chain, supply chain, fails, you're going to have service disruptions to your customers. Uh, so managers got to have to focus on the internal operations that enable them to satisfy the customers. And the second part of the balance scorecard gives managers that internal perspective, that um, managerial accounting kind of uh, internal measures. So internal measures for balance scorecard should stem from business processes that have the greatest impact. Okay, we, we are, I think, already talked about that. To achieve goals on cycle time, quality, productivity, and cost, <coughs> managers have to devise measures that are influenced by employee actions. And the employees have to be responsible for those measures. And then you have to track them and you have to take actions when they're not, when they're going in the wrong direction. This is a tremendous responsibility. It's not just a matter of putting measures in place. Information systems is what helped enable moving from just financial measures, which we spent years developing accounting systems, to now being able to track these measures on a wider scale and having it be non-financial. Because a balanced scorecard includes lots of non-financial measures. So when an unexpected signal appears on a balanced scorecard, executives then can query the information system to find out the source of the trouble and then put appropriate actions in place. So innovation and learning. Uh, Customer-based and internal business processes measure the balance score on the balance scorecard measure the parameters that the company considers most important for competitive success. Are you a fast follower or are you a market leader? Do you want to let uh, the premier company uh, come up with all the innovations and then scramble to catch up with them? That's not. A, this is a viable strategy that works very well for some companies. Uh, Panasonic spent their entire, um, they dedicated themselves to letting Sony make all the innovations and then copying their innovations, re-innovating their innovations at lower costs. Competition requires that companies make continuous improvements to their existing products and processes and have the ability to introduce entirely new products with expanded capabilities. So. This is where this takes. What have we learned as an organization? And it's even more important for the learning aspect, even though we don't think of that as important. But with the amount of turnover companies have these days, you know, with the loss of pensions, people don't stay at companies their entire lives. They're prone to move from company to company. And therefore, if you want to retain organizational knowledge and learning, uh, you have to focus on that. And the balance scorecard here again can help you. Is this as important as financial? This is a more of a long-term view of, of measurement and corporate success. So this is tied directly to the company's value. And it's only through the ability to launch new products, create more value for customers, and improve operating efficiencies that the company will stay in business and be able to create new markets and increase revenues in existing ones. Well, financial perspective, gee whiz, this is what accounting has been about since uh, I think they invented the abacus and cuneiform writing on tablets. 
um, what are the typical financial goals that we look at? Well, profitability, growth, shareholder value, uh, return on investment, all of those things that Wall Street looks at when they uh, value a publicly traded company. Operational performance and disappointing financial measures cr create frustration for senior executives. Uh, what are we talking about? It's often vented at nameless Wall Street analysts who allegedly cannot see past their quarterly blips, but so neither can some of the corporate executives in financial performance. So uh, they, you have to achieve these financial ob objectives on a timely basis while still managing your long term. What do you want to be long term? Um, I think the U.S. auto industry is a perfect example of going to China and being in a setup where they had to partner with a Chinese company or they couldn't enter the market, which resulted, they knew it was going to result in a major tech transfer from the U.S. companies to the Chinese companies. But guess what? If you're an executive and you can make your bonus goes up by a couple million dollars a year from that added revenue, a short term revenue from Chinese marketplaces, um, you can retire with more money. And that's a very short term view. Now the U.S. companies aren't doing well there. We've enabled the Chinese companies to do very well, and they are doing well and don't need the U.S. companies to partner with them anymore. Uh, wait till the Chinese cars come here. It's a, just a matter of time, I think. Uh, so measures of customer satisfaction, internal business performance, and innovation are derived from the company's particular view of the world and its perspective on the key success, success factors and how they relate, let's not forget, to the financial measures, especially the short-term ones. So one example here is uh, disappointing financial measures occur because companies don't follow their operational improvements with another round of actions. They just If you stagnate your, your, your improvement in operations, your quality and your productivity will probably trail off. It doesn't stay the same. You have to have some level of continuous improvement to maintain the same level. Quality and cycle time improvements can create excess capacity, uh, which means that you don't have to invest in new machinery if you can reduce it, your cycle times. And if you can improve your quality, that means there's less rework. It takes you, your, your capacity is increased by the cycle time reduction. So managers need to be prepared to either put the excess capacity to work or get rid of it. And that therefore you reduce your fixed cost. So if you're growing sales, you put the capacity to work. If you're not, you offload some of it, sell it and reduce your fixed costs. Uh, the excess capacity must either be used by boosting revenues or eliminated by reducing expenses if operational improvements are brought down to the bottom line, which, of course, they are. As companies improve their quality and response time, they eliminate the need to build, inspect, rework out of conformance products or reschedule or expedite delayed shipping orders. Everything just runs more smoothly. Eliminating these tasks means that some people who perform them are no longer needed. Ooh, so you can reduce your workforce too. Uh, you can do it by attrition or you could do it by layoff. Um, attrition means you retire people and as they retire, you don't replace them. Companies are understandably reluctant to lay off employees. Uh, it depends, <laughs> it really depends on what the economic state is they're operating in. Companies are very good at laying off employees when they wanna be especially since the employees may have been the source of the ideas that produce the higher quality and reduced cycle times. Layoffs are a poor reward for past improvement and can damage morale. So really what you'd like to do if you can is to grow the company and put them to work in another aspect. So companies will not realize all the financial benefits of their improvements until their employees and facilities are working to capacity. That means not under capacity and not grossly over capacity. Other companies confront the pain of downsizing to eliminate the expenses of the newly created excess capacity. So companies should specify how improvements in quality cycle time, quoted lead times, delivery, and new product introduction 
will lead to higher market share, operating margins, and asset turnover, and therefore creating higher value uh, to investors in their company. It's important. Um, as companies have applied the balanced scorecard, we have begun to they realize that the scorecard represents a fundamental change and underlying, uh, underlying assumptions about corporate performance. Uh, the picture of the hammer there kind of cracks me up because if you only have one tool or one measure, that reminds me of the old saying, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. You'll find me saying that probably way too often. The balanced scorecard, on your hand, uh, is suited to the kind of organization many companies want to stay they want to be. The scorecard puts strategy and vision, not control, at the center, um, not financial control. Believe me, financial control is never going away. But if you can enhance it with strategy and vision and have a longer-term view, this is what ERP systems have enabled companies to do because we can look at so many different measures. Um, It establishes goals, but assumes that people will adopt whatever behaviors and take whatever actions are necessary to achieve those goals. Therefore, having a balanced set of goals forces you, will encourage your company not to focus on just one thing. The measures are designed to pull people toward the overall uh, vision of the company, not just uh, reduce costs, not just... Uh, focus on absorption, not just focusing on inventory. So senior managers may know what the end result should be, but they cannot tell employees exactly how to achieve that. So this is where you have this hierarchy of measurements in place and a balanced format. How do these all translate to different parts of the company? So this, what in 1992 was a new approach to performance measurement, it's consistent with the initiatives underway in many companies at that time that were just implementing SAP and Oracle. So by combining financial, customer, internal process, and innovation, and organizational learning perspectives, the balanced scorecard helps managers understand at least implicitly many relationships. It helps managers transcend traditional notions about functional barriers and ultimately helps lead them to improve decision-making and problem solving. And I have to go because I have a phone call. We'll talk to you later. Thank you very much.